everybody, welcome to the Pagan Perspective. My name is Angel and I'm your Wednesday host. And this week we're talking about dietary choices and your path. <sighs> I've been dreading this video, not because the questions aren't great, they are great. They're just, it's a very, 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 very heated topic. And so with that in mind, I'm just going to put a little disclaimer in here. If you leave a negative comment on this video, just know this. I absolutely will not dignify an answer to your, your question or your comment. I won't even finish reading it. It most likely will be deleted, and if it's nasty enough, it'll probably be reported. I am absolutely not going to tolerate anybody being disrespectful. I am done. I'm done. <laughs> okay? So, just keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that I'm a 40-40... 44 year old woman. I'm not a little kid. I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of research and that's how I've come to the beliefs and the ideas that I hold. So please be respectful of that and I will be respectful as well. Okay? Disclaimer over. All right. <sighs> the questions come from Sarah. I'd like to hear the host cover the topic of dietary choices in relation to being pagan. Okay, if you subscribe to the Wiccan Read, or if you are if you consider your path to be earth-based, what roles does this play in your diet? Uh, I don't use, acknowledge the Wiccan Read, um, so it plays no role in my path at all, in my diet, in my path, whatever. Being earth-based plays a huge part. I think as pagans, we tend to be very connected with the ebbs and flows of this, uh, nature in general. And we celebrate harvests. We're very conscious of the wheel of the year. So I think just almost intrinsically, people in general are connected to nature or they are connected to, na to nature, but some have become disconnected. We'll get into that later. But anyways, I think as pagans, or even more so, so I think it plays a huge part. It makes me very aware of what's going in my body. It makes me very aware of the cycle of the year and how things will die off, come back, when things are fruitful, what things are growing, what things are dying, how to store them, prepare them, yada yada yada. So I think being an earth-based religion has made me very, very conscious of that. Okay, what are your thoughts on conventional factory farming, such as um, a conventional farming practices, such as factory farming, routine antibiotic use, growth hormones, GMOs, pesticides, soil erosion, mass agricultural pollution, etc., that are harmful to the planet and its inhabitants? Okay. I've done a lot of research on factory farming. This is one of the reasons why I became a vegetarian. It also is one of the reasons why I am so against factory farming. I, I've done a lot of research to see that um, the antibiotics and things that they're putting in animals and are, are to an unnatural point, in my opinion. Growth hormones are atrocious and disgusting. GMOs, even though now they're trying to say they're not harmful, are harmful. Pesticides, if you have to spray pesticides on my food in hazmat suit, I don't want to eat that food. And there are companies that do that. Soil erosion, bad for the environment. Mass agricultural pollution, horrible for the environment. Uh, if, again, I've done a lot of research on factory farms and I've seen the way that animals live. I've seen the, the runoff from animal uh, um, urine feces and what it's doing to local waterways, what it's doing to local, um, just local lands that aren't farms. 
and it's frightening to me. So I don't support factory farming one little bit at all, period. And again, I think that goes back to being very connected to nature and being very connected to what I put in my body, which I consider my temple, and being very, and understanding that my divine spirit lives in my temple, so I want to be very cautious of what I put in my body. Now, I'll get to more into this. Okay. <sighs> what are your thoughts on killing and eating animals and animal byproducts? I am a vegetarian, so I'm very not cool with killing animals. I don't like that animals have to die to be our food, and I don't think they should have to. Uh, and regardless of what anybody says, you don't have to eat meat to live. Okay? Don't, don't try to sell that, please. Anyways, I don't like that animals have to die to be food, but what I have more of an issue with is their life prior to that. I don't, I could not sit, I couldn't be okay with eating meat because I could, again, research that I've done. Um, my ex-husband's family all worked for the FDA. Knowing that animals were abused, knowing the conditions they lived in, knowing that we're suffering, I could not live with that personally. These are sentient beings that I share this planet with and I feel, I feel that I am a steward of this planet and that I should leave it better than I, sh than I found it. I don't find comfort in eating animals. I don't find joy in it. I don't find, I don't, I don't, I don't like any of that. The more I dug into being connected with nature, the less I could get, the the more I became intolerant to things like that. So that became a huge part of um, why I became a vegetarian. Animal byproducts. Uh, I do eat eggs, and but I had to do research on where those eggs were coming from because I had done research on how chickens were treated. And I found that natural and free range doesn't mean what we think it means. We think it's happy little chickens walking around the farm and that's not the case. Free range a lot of times just means a big huge building with fans but really no ventilation and definitely no sunshine and the, the chickens just aren't all crammed in cages. But they still don't, that's still not free range in my opinion. So I had to educate myself on where I buy my, chick my, my eggs from. Now, I also eat some dairy. Now I'm trying to get away from dairy um, and I'm weeding it out almost to nothing at the moment and it soon will be nothing. But I have ethical reasons for not wanting to eat dairy and I have physical reasons. I, my body can't tolerate dairy anymore and that to me was very concerning. Why is that? Um, again, being connected to nature, I'm very conscious of these things that are happening with my body and with food. So, um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not for killing animals. I understand people will do that to eat meat. Uh, I don't think animals should have to suffer to be food. They shouldn't. They should live a happy life, and if they're going to die to be your food, it should be quick and painless. There's no reason why it can't be. I mean, that's how I feel about that. Your thoughts on those animals, how those animals are raised, how they're fed, or what they're fed, and how they're slaughtered. Again, uh, they're raised with a lot of abuse, and I was not okay with that. That hurt my heart. Uh, what was being put in them scared the Jesus out of me. Uh, chemicals, I, I couldn't believe some of the stuff that was being put into meat. And again, I'm against them being slaughtered for consumption, but I, at the end of the day, I, I know that's not going to stop, but they don't have to suffer to be our food. 
They just don't. And I really don't care what anybody says about that. They don't have to. It's not a necessity at all. So, uh, where am I? What are your thoughts on food add additives and highly processed foods? Food additives are creepy, scary to me. And highly processed foods are, they're all, they all started ta tasting the same. But this is how I kind of saw life when you're growing up. When you're growing up here, like on this one train of food eating, you know, you eat what your parents make and you don't really think too much about it. It's like, yeah, we're the spaghetti or tacos or pizza or whatever. And you don't really know what this stuff is that's on it. You know, your parents grew up the same way. And you either stay on that same train and you grow up and you, yeah, you know, the ground beef is cow and yeah, you know, the, the you know, you, you know what stuff is, but you're not really n aware of it. You're not, it's not in your face. You haven't done education, you, like educated yourself on, you know, how they live. You haven't spent time with them. It, it's very detached, you know, and I find that people either stay on that same train or they jump off that train and to another train that's, you can't unsee things you've seen and you can't unlearn things that you've learned and so you make different choices. I don't think that people who stay on the first train are necessarily bad. Uh, and I don't think that people who jump on the next tra other train are necessarily good. I just think that they're aware. And that's it. Uh, okay. Thoughts on fair trade and food items so, so, sources locally or versus afar? First of all, fair trade I think is fantastic because it promotes a balanced, eco, um, not ecosystem, but a balanced uh, financial system. and. Sourcing locally is great for two reasons. It's fiscally responsible to keep your money locally and support your local farmers, your local growers, uh, and you know, keeping them going. Then you know where your, you know, your money is going. But you also, secondary, know how the food is being prepared, it's how it's being treated, how it's being processed, what's being put on it, put in, put in it, you know. It keeps, it keeps your food more in your line of sight. And to me, I think that's really important because I felt like I got very detached. Growing up, I was on that train and I felt very detached from my food. And once I started educating myself on uh, the whole spectrum of food, I started realizing how much I didn't know. And I didn't know that I didn't know. <laughs> So I started really educating myself about it and going down a, a, a different path. Buying locally, buying organic, being very aware of titles of food like natural. Um, there's no regulations on natural foods or free range foods or anything like that. And I didn't know that. I thought a label on a food on a, on food that you get should be, you know, it should be truthful. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. That was shocking to me. So every time I peeled a little bit back from the onion, I started finding more and getting more conscious of my food. So and it all started with basically wanting to know how to make bread to be honest with you what are your thoughts on magic in the kitchen and magical food preparation I think that for me again I feel like I was very detached from my food and I feel like society is very detached from our food we don't know how it's processed we don't know what people are putting on it put in it how it's handled how it's managed and a lot of people don't want to know. And that to me is very scary. I want to know. I want truthful labeling, you know? And when I, since I've done a lot of research and I've 
been able to find responsible food brands and so forth. When I bring home food to make a meal, it is a very magical experience. It's it's energizing. You know, there'll be nights that I'll put on a, a Frank Sinatra and I'll make Italian food or I'll put on um, um, salsa music and I'll make uh, I'll make tacos and burritos or what have you. Uh, it's exciting. It's you know for me. I never used to like to cook, but the more I got very aware of my food, the more I started enjoying it, and the more I started experimenting. And when I cook a meal for my husband or for my family from scratch, which I never thought I would enjoy doing because it just seemed like such boring work. Plus, I could never make everything all warm at the same time. It's like I'm, my mom was like this magician. I don't know how she did that. It was crazy. but. I can do it now. <laughs> um, but I, when I make a meal for my family or just for my husband and he enjoys it, I know I am, I've put my love into it, I put my prosperity into it and health into it. I know that he, it's nurturing him, his body, he's enjoying it. it you know, we, we, we spend fun time together just talking and it's magical. And I think it's 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 a very important thing to do. You know, we get so busy in life, we don't sit down and spend time together. We, we don't know what's going on with each other's lives. We don't know what's going on with our food. It's it's time to get back to connecting, you know. And with that, I'm going to end this video. This is like my sixth time shooting this video. It's a hard video to shoot. It's really hard to, to, to be very careful on what you're saying, but still be very honest. Because the last thing I want to do is offend somebody. I also don't want to be authentic, uh, authentic, uh, unauthentic. I, I want to make sure I'm being truthful about how I feel. We're not, we are not going to agree on this, con this, uh, these these uh, answers, you know, these questions. We're not, not everybody's going to agree on them. We're just not going to. We're all different. And that's fine, as long as we do it respectfully. All right. That's it for me. I promise. No more. I will see you guys the week after next, because next week's subs week. And until next time, peace and blessed be.